Welcome, you're watching Vox News, your daily evening news with Rita Kumkumo. Our headlines today, Senegalese experts approve COVID organics and will perform clinical trials to check its efficiency against COVID-19. Chijian authorities receive hundreds of doses of COVID organics, Madagascar's alleged anti-coronavirus herbal remedy. The presidential election remains scheduled for October in Ivory Coast, despite the coronavirus pandemic. Our top story today, a Senegalese scientific committee led by Professor Daoud Anjaye gave its green light last weekend to begin performing clinical trials for COVID organics, the alleged Malagasy herbal cure against coronavirus. After the Ministry of Health received samples of the Malagasy drink and announced the start of clinical trials on its components, such as Artemisia last Thursday, doses of COVID-19 collected by the Senegalese government were entrusted to the scientific committee for research. After several days of study, Professor Daoud Anjaye confirmed the news in an interview with a local radio station, saying that his team is now accelerating the procedure and moving towards the use of Artemisia in the treatment against coronavirus. The professor added that the committee will work on a research protocol before offering the product to Senegalese patients. However, the written protocol will have to be validated, among other things, by the Ministry of Health to be implemented. According to the professor, more detailed examinations are currently being carried out and the results should be available within one to two weeks. Just like Senegal and several other African countries, Chad announced on Sunday that it has received a donation of 600 doses of COVID organics from Madagascar. The organic herbal tea composed of Artemisia and other Malagasy plants kept secret will be given to COVID-19 patients as a dietary supplement. However, the treatment protocol adopted by Chadian doctors will not change, according to the Chadian Minister of Health. With a population of 15.5 million inhabitants, Chad has officially recorded 322 cases of coronavirus, including 53 recoveries and 31 fatalities. In Benin, authorities conducted mass coronavirus testing on teachers over the weekend before the reopening of schools this Monday as part of a plan aimed at relaxing measures against the pandemic. I was here yesterday as we got the message from the school board inviting teachers to come here for the test. I was here yesterday. My name wasn't on the list. I had to call the board authorities and this morning on our WhatsApp group we were informed that there is another list. So go and see it. That's why I'm here. And now I've seen my name on the list. The lady has just confirmed to me that my test has come back negative, so I'm happy and confident and I hope my colleagues do like me so they can have peace of mind once they are in class. Because really, with this time marching on and everything that is happening in the world, we have a lot to worry about. After six weeks at home, authorities are allowing students from the final year of primary school through to universities to resume classes. The decision to reopen schools has been the subject of some criticism from the unions. Strangely enough, we are talking about progressive screening, which means that the government is aware that it will not be able to screen everyone before the start of the school year on the 11th. So they screen a few, they don't screen others, but they allow everyone to be present in the schools and colleges. Where is the logic? Where is the logic with these different measures, for example, at the primary and at the secondary level? It is impossible, both in the private and in the public sector, it is impossible to enforce barrier gestures in our secondary schools. With the current state of affairs, when you look at the number of students, when you look at the available infrastructure, when you look at the means public institutions have available, they have not had the subsidies expected from the state, and it's practically impossible to enforce barrier gestures. Last week, authorities conducted nearly 14,000 tests on the population with the focus now on health workers and teachers due to a limited testing capacity. School children will receive face masks and nursery schools will remain closed for the rest of the school year. Lecture halls at universities will not reopen to avoid large gatherings and selected courses will be delivered online.
In Kenya, a nine-year-old schoolboy from the west of the country designed a wooden machine that allows people to wash their hands safely using a pedal and therefore avoiding the spread of germs. On the first day, I collected timber, nuts and nails and on the second day, I started making this machine. I continued on the third day and on the fourth day, my dad helped me to finish making it. I saw it on TV when they assembled toy motor vehicles and I told my dad that we could do a similar thing but it could be for hand washing. My dad went to his workplace but when he came back from work, he found I had made this structure where you only use your legs to make water and soap come out without touching it. When he saw that, he decided to help me finish making this invention. My son came and asked me, Dad, why don't we make something that we can use for hand washing without using hands to touch it? Because the president says that the coronavirus spreads through handshakes and when you touch. What an infected person has touched, you can get infected from it too. He went to the market and saw people using jerry cans where the tap is blocked with a screw. So everyone who wants to use it had to touch it. Won't that make them catch coronavirus? When I was called to come, I saw the work he had done was marvelous and it was to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. With the machine he has made, you don't need to touch it with your hands. Instead, you use your legs to step on the wooden pedals and you can wash without touching the machine so you don't catch the virus. Steve Wamukota became a celebrity on social media following his brilliant initiative. On the political front, the 2020 Ivorian presidential election remains scheduled for late October, despite the coronavirus pandemic, as announced on Sunday by the Minister of Communication, Sidi Touré. However, the health crisis could delay the renewal of identity cards and enrollment on the electoral lists. The Independent Electoral Commission will have the final say and will provide in due time the operational schedule for the election. In neighboring Burkina Faso, Eddie Comboigo, the president of the Congress for Democracy and Progress, the former ruling party in Burkina Faso until the overthrow of Blaise Compaore in the year 2014, was officially nominated on Sunday as a candidate for the November presidential election by his party. The choice of Mr. Comboigo, who got elected following a vote with a total of 133 votes against 21 for his rival, Yahaya Zungrana, will have to be endorsed by Blaise Compaore, the party's honorary president, before being invested at a convention. As the head of the Congress for Democracy and Progress Party since May 2015, Eddie Comboigo was previously a member of the National Assembly and a former candidate for the 2015 presidential election before his candidacy got rejected due to a law excluding Compaore's relatives who had supported his plan to amend the Constitution. Burkina Faso will hold presidential and parliamentary elections on the 22nd of November. In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the first hearing of the trial of a case against Vital Kamere, President Félix Tshisekedi's chief of staff, began this Monday before a court in Kinshasa. Vital Kamere, who has been in pretrial detention in the country's capital city since the 8th of April, is prosecuted, along with two other protagonists, for the alleged embezzlement of more than 50 million US dollars from the emergency program of the Congolese head of state. Today's hearing lasted about an hour before being quickly adjourned to the 25th of May for further trial, following a request made by the defendant's lawyers, who insisted they had not had access to every evidence on the record. During his speech, Vital Camere said he only intervened in the emergency program as chief of staff to the President of the Republic and argued that there were nine supervisors involved in the operation, in addition to the coordinator of the program. He denounced a trap and biased questions when he was asked to clarify his function and role in the program. In Sierra Leone, President Julius Madabio suspended one of his ministers on Sunday, accused of threatening to kill his opponents after a series of violence took place in the country, according to a presidential statement. Abu Abu Kuruma, minister of the northern province, was suspended for unacceptable conduct and public statements. In a video circulating on social media, the minister threatens to break the legs of any young person who behaves badly before taking care of their parents. In Mali, the president of the Platform Against Corruption, Professor Clément Dembele, was arrested by agents from the state security department. The information was confirmed by a source close to the anti-corruption activist. The arrest reportedly took place on Saturday morning in the Bamako district. Since Friday, his relatives have not been able to visit him. 
A crisis unit has been set up to demand his release. The Malian security services argue that the activist wanted to destabilize the state, a statement denied by his supporters. In Cameroon, local elected representatives continue to be the target of separatist armed fighters in the northwest and southwest regions plagued with the Anglophone crisis. 34-year-old Mamfi Mayor Ashu Pritli was murdered in the southwest region on Sunday morning. According to family members and local press, he had received a phone call from alleged separatists who invited him to meet with them in his village called Eshobi to make peace by laying down their arms. The mayor instead fell into an ambush and was shot dead. He was one of the youngest mayors of the February 2020 municipal elections. Finally, on the football scene, authorities in the Democratic Republic of the Congo have decided to put an end to the country's national championship due to the coronavirus pandemic. The country will favor the results recorded and validated just before the suspension of the championship. Therefore, the country's representatives at the next competitions of the African Football Confederation will be the TP Mazembe, the ASV Club, the AS Manima Union and the DCMP. The 2020-2021 sports season should officially begin in the country on the 1st of August. That's it for today. Thank you for watching Vox News.